Another habitat improvement season is almost in the books for another year. Most landowners will be planting their food plots in August, creating mock scrapes and getting stands and cameras in place. Another feature guys can still add to their setups though are pinch points or barricades to force deer to go where you can get higher percentage shot opportunities or keep deer from sneaking behind you on the downwind side of your stand. Well in this video I want to show you a couple ambush setups I made last January for a landowner in Georgia which will give him a much better opportunity of getting close enough to take a big buck in his area. Hopefully this will give you some ideas on how you can spot opportunities like this on your property and implement the same strategy. So after hinge cutting for a couple days in southern Maryland, I headed down to Georgia to meet up with Doc, who is not only a cattle rancher, but a full-time surgeon as well. He and his ranch manager, John, are just great family guys who also have a ministry where they bring in young men just out of the military and provide them with work and training on different aspects of running a cattle ranch. They take them to church on Sunday and help them get back on their feet for life after military service. When I arrived, Doc and John showed me around the more than one square mile ranch. Even though most of the farm was cattle pasture, he had pockets of woods scattered around that we would drive to and scout on foot. Since Doc is primarily a gun hunter, most of his stands are raised box blinds located in food plots where deer can see him come and go. I gave him some ideas on moving some of the blinds off the food and into the cover and hiding other blinds with miscanthus grass and hiding his access with switchgrass. Here's one of the first blinds we checked out where they learned about this strategy. You guys know what Miscanthus gigantus is? It's a tall grass. Okay, so a lot, some people have uh, these ornamental grasses that they grow around their mailbox or the power boxes in their yard, and then it turns brown in the fall, and then they cut it off and it grows back again. Well, same thing, but Miscanthus gets about 15 feet. So what I'm gonna recommend, and I'll put this all on a plant. You don't have sure. to remember none of this, right? But I think what you ought to do is plant like a half moon all the way around that blind from here going all the way around the front and then down into there that way if you can come in the back they won't see me they're not going to see you you can get all the way up the ladder and they probably won't even see you and and that stuff will grow to the bottom of those windows that blind will become a non-factor because them does don't care they'll walk out here you know even if they know you're in there they might not care but that mature buck he's going to circumvent out of bow range out of gun range because he knows that's a boogeyman box yeah yeah because he's seen guys coming and going too many times. Yeah. When he was six months old, right, as a fawn, he's a button buck. And he's seen guys coming and going, and the does are all educating that little button buck. And by the time he gets to three and a half, four and a half, nah, he knows what that is, right? So that'll be one of the things i uh, going to help you out with, Jim, is to try and hide you coming and going. We could do that in several of our stands. Mm -hmm. So there's another product. You guys familiar with switchgrass at all? One of the, another guy that does what you do talks about switchgrass all the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. So up in Michigan, man, we got so many, I mean, the deer are educated so bad that we, we have to use switchgrass just to get around the property so deer don't see us. And oh, wow. so switchgrass is a lot easier than the miscanthus. So miscanthus is a perennial. It'll come back every year, right? You just, it's a, it's a little, like a tulip bulb, a rhizome, stick it in the ground and it'll grow and then you're good to go. Switchgrass is like a grass, but it gets eight to nine feet. Annual? It's a perennial. Good. Yeah, yeah. So you plant it once and you're done. And probably two years and it'll be up to six, seven feet. It'll hide you by, by the time second season. So we could switch grass that road. Yeah, yeah. Right. After looking at a few more of his blind setups and explaining how planting a screen would help them to hide from deer on the property, they caught on to that idea real fast and Doc came up with his own name for switch grass. I drive, I come in that area over there. I drive along the fence and I park underneath that oak tree in the back on the other side of this hill. Oh yeah. And then I walk to right here. Okay. All right. Where there's going to be Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> and he's already catching on. That's it. <laughs> I'm trying. Another idea they showed me was an open strip of timber with mature trees on a low flat that bucks would just cruise through during the rut. They weren't sure how to hunt it or how to get their deer to spend more time in there to create more predictable shot opportunities. So later that afternoon, I spent a few hours dropping several big trees to let in more sunlight for new woody brows and then hinge cut other trees to create some horizontal cover and a predictable deer travel corridor with an easy shooting range of some higher ground where he can hide a box blind inside some cedars. I also cut a barricade from the deer trail to the cattle fence to keep bucks on the deer trail within view as they pass by the blind. This area will also turn into a bedding area as more region pops up with the sunlight. 
This will definitely become an area bucks will check for does during the rut phases in November. One of the ways bucks travel to get to this area is by crossing a road and a creek and then working their way through some wet ground around a cattle pasture and then jumping a fence that John lowers for deer during the hunting season. Doc and his neighbors have seen the biggest bucks take this route every year. The problem was getting close enough for a shot without tipping them off. So one of the first things I'm looking for when creating a plan for a landowner is I'm looking for pinch points and funnels that the landowner can take advantage of and get close enough to for some good shot opportunities. And what we have here on this property is we've got some, a big block of timber that goes off to the south here and this comes up to connect right with this block of timber. We've got this big block of timber that continues off to the right and this leads right down through here and everything kind of connects right here at the road and then this crick crosses the road right here as well and this is about the only spot where these deer can really cross the road so that they can go from cover to cover on the other side this is pretty much all open this is all a you know a big field with a fence so this right here is about the easiest place that these deer can cross and again this is where doc tells me that a lot of his neighbors are seeing big bucks cross the road is generally right here by the creek so I went in and I checked this thing out by myself on foot and what I found was there are several deer trails after they cross the road here. They, there's a couple of trails that go through the timber right here and they continue up this way where they cross the fence that John lowers and then into this bedding area in this area that I created the day before. So there's other trails that kind of hug the right side of this little clearing right here and it goes through some prickers and it connects up into here and then there's another trail that kind of hugs the creek right here and then it goes off into this way or it continues up into this way so there's multiple trails that go through here but you just don't know which trail these deer are going to take so my plan was to block off all these trails that go through this timber right here and i want to force just one trail that's on the left side here and it's going to go right by this gate right here where I'm going to propose that Doc puts a blind. So this is what it's going to look like. Up here at the top, this is the bedding area that I created the day before. Here's a little barricade that I created from the deer trail all the way to the cattle fence. So they have to go around the left side of this barricade and then we're going to put a blind right here just on the inside of the fence. So when Doc comes out of the house, he can just come right across the field and he's dropping down in elevation, get right into the back of the blind, and he just shoot right over the fence, right down into this bedding area as these bucks come cruising through here looking for hot estrus does during the pre-rut. I did drop a few trees right here, you remember, and I'm forcing these deer to go right through here. Now, for these deer to get here, this is the way that they're coming generally. He says they're generally going from, from south to north across this road, so as they do, they're peeling off into here and they're way out of bow range, way out of gun range because it's just too thick. So the yellow trails are what the deer are doing now. And this orange trail is the new trail that I created. And I dropped some individual trees across this old trail, created a bedding area right in here. This is the barricade right here. And I just dropped a whole bunch of trees going back and forth through here all the way to the cattle fence. And so there's, it's really difficult for deer to get through here now. Since the canopy has been opened up, there's going to be more regen coming up so that it's going to get even thicker yet. So most of these deer now are going to be coming right up this orange line around the barricade, and then they're going to hook up onto the trail that's already there. And when they do that, it's going to be about a 75 to 80 yard shot. Now, another reason that this is going to work so well is you'll see that the uh, Windrose maps right here is showing that in his area, the wind is normally coming out of the northwest or the northeast. And it looks like it's coming out of those two directions well over 50% of the time. And this is the month of October, and this is the month of November. So during the rut phases, you know the wind is generally going to be coming out of the northwest or the northeast. And that's going to set up really well for this blind right here because if the, north, if the wind is coming up out of the northwest and going in this direction, these deer are going to be turning right into the wind, which is a safe scenario for them. They'll be walking into the wind, should be paralleling Doc's scent as it's going down the other way. Now, if the wind is a little bit more west and it drops into this creek bottom, this creek bottom is low enough, it's a big enough ditch where once his scent gets down into here, 
the water current's going to carry it right inside this creek. So these deer are not going to be able to smell it as they're coming up this trail. So he's going to be pretty scent safe even with a northwest wind. And then obviously with a northeast wind, you know, he won't have to worry about it. And this would be the blind he would hunt also with a northeast wind. And the access to this blind is real easy. Come right out of the house, cross the field, and then get right into the blind. And he's only going to want to hunt this starting about that last week of October when the bucks are starting to cruise for hot estrus does in that late morning to early afternoon time frame. Now, in case you're wondering, you know, why doesn't he just set up over here where it's real simple? The deer come right through here and it gets bottlenecked down. But the problem is this is not Doc's property on this side of the road. Uh, this cow pasture is not Doc's property. Uh, this is not his property either. So he basically has this narrow strip right here to work with. For him to come right out of the house through here is going to be really simple. It's going to be the easiest scenario for him to get a shot at these deer coming through here. Now, the day that I was going to work on this area here, Doc told me that he had to go back to do some surgeries at the hospital. And so I told him that, okay, when I get done with this, I'm going to just grab my video camera and I will walk this trail and explain what I did and why I did and what you guys need to do exactly to uh, finish this up as far as cleaning out shooting lanes and stuff. So when I got done, I grabbed my video camera and this is the video I shot for him on ground level so that he could visually see what I did. All right, Doc, I'm over here at the road. This is where most of the deer cross from the woodlot across the road by the bridge, coming across the fence, and they come right through here. We had this big tree down right here that I cut off and got it out of the way. It was gonna fall down right across this path here eventually. So got this cut down, got it out of the way. So what I wanna do now is just walk you through this uh, number one deer trail going from the road along the creek all the way to that hub that we talked about where we're going to put a stand which is over by that gate so i'm going to take you all the way through here and i uh, had to clean this trail up had a lot of debris on it and so now these deer can get from point a to point b during the seeking phase very easily it'll cover more ground on your property better chance that you'll have a buck walking by your stand if it's easy to get there. So I'm going to create some bedding out here to the right on that open flat in there. That way when the wind is coming from that direction out of the north toward this trail, all the buck has to do is walk down this trail and with that north wind coming from his right, he'll be able to scent check any deer in those beds. You'll also be able to scent check if there's any competition over there. And he can do that just by walking down this trail. So with that north wind, that'll make this trail more predictable. And that north wind will be safe for you to hunt that box blind over by the gate. So everything is going to be working in your favor with some kind of a northerly wind. Northwest, north, northeast, don't matter. All right, so we're, uh, I can see why the deer like to go through here. It's pretty secure. They got a body of water on their left. They got a lot of thick brush on the right. What's not to like about this? This is security. This is why I think the mature bucks have no problem walking up and down this trail during daylight. So I just made it better. So I cut a big chunk out of this log here and uh, rolled it out of the way up ahead. And we got another big log that they were jumping over. And now I made this wide enough so if ever you wanna take a walk behind brush mower, like a DR mower, right through here, you can do that. Cause this is about four feet wide. Then I cut down some of these uh, green briar and multi-floor rows. Man, you talk about Pricker City. All right, so then, then we got a, a few hinge trees here just to kind of keep them on this uh, trail that I'm going on. Hinge cut this tree here, and uh, it's not going to live, but you can see it's going to stay elevated for a very, very long time, especially within branches holding it up. All right, going a little further. 
I got another tree that was able to stay attached, elevated. They might even might even get some does bedding underneath there. I kind of cleaned that up under there. All right, got another one here. Big, big tree. I was able to slow it down by falling it into some birch over there. They'll probably bed right here. You see, I cut some branches off, made it clean. They'll even walk underneath that thing. I don't, I'm not walking underneath because I don't feel like bending down with a hard hat on. All right, continuing on. Now, we have this uh, little washout here. Remember, he had that blue, that blue PVC pipe that was uh, laying across there to the, on the left side in that opening. Well, I rolled it out of the way after I just caught the end of it with that tree when it came down. So this is basically the start of a big barricade where we don't want deer going through that wood lot to the hinge cut bedding area that I did the first day I was here. We want them to stay on this trail to get there. So let me, uh, I'm gonna put my saw down a minute. I have to jump across here. Get this out of the way. All right, they're probably gonna jump right through there. So they're gonna come around this tree here. Here's where the pipe was laying. Like I said, the tree just barely caught the end of it. Shattered it. So now, what we have here to my right is a barricade through the swamp, goes all the way to the uh, fence on the other side of that wood lot. Put it this way, there's no way a buck that wants to get from point A to point B looking for does is gonna go through all the trouble of walking through that barricade. I'll, uh, I'll try and send you some pictures. We'll show that barricade, but you can kind of see the hole in the sky. It's a line, it's a long line of blue sky out there. And uh, that's where the trees came from, they're all laying down. So you can see this is the old trail. This is the old trail where they were going around this uh, section of prickers on the right. So I totally blocked this off. And uh, we're gonna go around and get back on this trail. So this, uh, this new trail goes around the left side of all that debris. Another big tree. They're gonna stay on this trail, which some of them already did, but now all of them will. So you're gonna catch 100% of these deer going through here. Now, some of them might go right through here and then go on the left side of the gate where you'll have a shot. And you'll still be safe with that north wind before they get south of you. You'll, you'll already have a, an empty shell flying out of your gun. So more trees, more blockage. We'll come through here, had to clean this all up, crossing this creek, and now we're getting to the hub. You can see the, the Kubota's over there by the gate, and here's the hub. So most of the deer are going to continue on right over, right over here. They're going to cross this creek. I had to clean that up, a bunch of crap over there. And uh, now they can get around and go around the left side of the prickers over there. Or they can go this way. They can cut through here, cut a bunch of trees down. Now you can see in here, they might even want a bed right here underneath these uh, cedars, the evergreens. But if they want, but anyway, I had a cut a hole through here now they can cut across but they can't get to here and cut across into that woodlot until we go back toward the gate until they expose themselves to your box blind so this is the hub northwest east south all all trails go through here right in this circle right in here so you see we got a bunch of uh, green briar in front of me we got some bushes Already talked to John. He's going to come in here sometime, I think soon, and have uh, one of your guys come in here and mulch this. 
and uh, just knock it down so you got a clear shooting lane. So once this is down, we'll look to see what that looks like. And you can see the gate right there. I propose that we put a box blind just on the other side of the gate. All right, probably plant some of that tall miscanthus grass, the 15 foot stuff around that box blind. We don't want to call attention to ourselves. And I'm going to recommend you take that corn feeder out of there. We just want to leave this area virgin. We don't want to come in here every two, three weeks and put corn in that feeder because you don't need corn right here to kill that buck. Those bucks are going to do what they do without food. And the food is what's going to trip you up by putting it in there. So let's, uh, let's just get rid of the feeder. Box blind will be there just to the right of the yellow gate. And uh, the only time you'll want to hunt that is starting the week of Halloween and like the first two weeks of November when they're seeking and chasing. Because when it's early October, they're not going to go up and down that trail searching for does, right? It's like when fish start spawning, they start running up the river. That's when you start fishing the river. But you're not going to fish that river in August, right? Because they're not running up the river yet. So same thing with this. You don't want to hunt that box blind until late October when these bucks are actually going to take this new trail that I made and come around here through the hub during daylight, all right? That's when you're going to get them. And you're going to want to come in in the morning. You want to sit till at least noon, hopefully one o'clock, and just wait for these bucks to come around down that trail that I made and it's uh, everything I put down is going to force them into this hub right there. If you can clear this stuff out and get a shot, that's only about, uh, I'm going to say, an 80-yard shot to the hub from the blind. So not a big deal. So anyway, I hope that makes sense there, Doc. We will talk about this on Zoom. But I just wanted to give you a visual of what it looked like with boots on the ground. So I hope that video clip gave you a better idea of what that trail and trap looks like and how they're really not that hard to create. You still have some time in August and early September to set up one of these depending on where you are in the country. It's one of the most effective and quick habitat features you can make to help you steer bucks within bow range. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank <laughs> you.